Welcome back to Anderson's Smoke Show. Today, we are taking a classic Italian meatball recipe and turning it into a stuffed meatloaf. Stick around, see how we do it. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and ring that bell so that you can keep up with the latest content. Smash the like button and write me a comment. Let me know what you think. Now let's get down and dirty with some meatloaf. What's up? You ready? I've been thinking about this meatloaf video all day. Stay right here, let me show you what I got in mind. So I want you to take this. Dude, I was talking actual meatloaf. Here, take this. Are you kidding me? All right, so today with this recipe, we are gonna follow my Italian grandmother's meatball recipe. Growing up, this is exactly how my mom would make meatloaf. So I'm gonna show you. The recipe will be down in the description and it's going to be for a one pound meatloaf. Today, we are going to quadruple that and make a four pound meatloaf. So why don't you come in here, we'll see how we do it. We have four pounds of meat. We have two pounds of beef and two pounds of pork, all ground, fresh, ready to go. We have four eggs beaten. We have two cups of panko breadcrumbs. We have minced parsley and minced garlic. We have salt and Parmesan cheese. Let's go ahead and get these mixed up. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and start by pouring the egg, which is beaten, into the ground pork and ground beef. We're going to pour the Parmesan cheese and salt. And like I said, the recipe will be in the description below. We're gonna go with our garlic and our parsley. Need a little help from the rubber glove there. And I'm gonna begin by mixing this. And I'm just gonna use one hand here because I'm gonna need those breadcrumbs here in a minute. But we don't want that to dry out right off the bat. So let's get everything mixed in first. I'm gonna take some of these breadcrumbs with my clean glove, and I'm gonna slowly start to add some of these in. Now, you may need to add a little bit of water, but you never wanna do it off the bat. You wanna wait until you get all the ingredients in and see what the consistency is like. If it appears to be a little dry, add a tablespoon or two of water at a time. The last thing that you wanna do is make it runny you'll have trouble making a loaf out of it. All right. So we're gonna add some more breadcrumbs. And we'll get that mixed in. And the parsley, the garlic, everything mixing in here, it smells great. It reminds me of my grandmother's house. It smells like little Italy. And I can see as I'm starting to get more and more breadcrumbs in, it is starting to thicken up quite a bit. So we probably will be adding a little bit of water, like I said, a couple tablespoons at a time. All right, we're just gonna add a dash of water here. And start to work that. And it was just getting a little bit too sticky to work with. And we truthfully don't even have all the breadcrumbs in yet. So we'll just add water as needed. Soon here we will get this onto a cutting board. 
and start to work with it and try and loaf it up a little bit. We've got a little special surprise to go along with it. Go ahead and add just a little bit more water here. This is a perfectly shaped, beautiful looking loaf. I hate to break it to you, but we're gonna spread this open and just kind of cup it so that you, you kind of build a little channel there. We're gonna go all the way down through the center. Imagine making like a nice bowl inside. And I am going to start loading this up with mozzarella cheese. And some of it I may break a little bit to kind of stuff it in there the best that we can. Our goal is not to have too much, but enough to fill it and then enough to where we can actually close this still. Truthfully, that's about as much as I think we're gonna get in there safely. So now what we need to do is fold this back together. Do a little suturing with the meat as we go. That's a pretty good looking loaf right there. All right, so you're probably wondering what I'm doing here, and that is a good question. But like I've said in many videos of mine, bacon makes everything better. So we're gonna take grandma's recipe and put a little twist. We've got two packs of thick cut bacon. We are going to lay this out one pack wide, just like so. And we are going to wrap this meatloaf in bacon. So we're gonna use this foil here to help us. And I'll show you how. We're just overlapping the bacon just a little bit so that it kinda, one lays on top of the next. And like I said, we want about one pack wide. And in this situation and your situation may be different, we are trying to go one pack wide, which will accommodate the width of the meatloaf. So if you have a small meatloaf, you most likely won't need an entire pack of bacon. But this is a four pound monster loaf. So we need monster bacon. Now, that looks like it may be enough, but you're wrong. We got another pack. So here we've got a second pack and we want to extend the roll. We want to overlap these, this next row by a couple inches onto the last roll and that will help get them started. All right, so we have this meatloaf here at the edge of the tray. And what I'm going to do is just flip this right onto the bacon. So you're probably wondering what the hell we're doing. We're wondering the same thing. We use this foil as a guide and what we're going to do is roll this and continue rolling it so that we get the bacon to wrap around the meatloaf. Never done it before and we may not ever do it again. 
let's give it a try. So what I want to do is just roll this meatloaf. That worked halfway decent. Get a little bit of this excess so you can watch. Now that is a damn masterpiece. So for today's smoke, we're gonna go with my favorite, which is that Pit Boss Classic Blend. That is the Pecan, the Hickory, and the Mesquite. Come in here, let me show you what it's about. This classic blend goes well with the beef, the pork, the lamb, the poultry, and the fish. So it's gonna pair really well, considering that this recipe is using beef and pork. Let's go ahead and get it loaded up. We've got this monster meatloaf out at the smoker. We've got the smoker set to 250 degrees. Let's go ahead and get this thing in. So we've got this meatloaf in, and I'm not gonna lie, it's a monster. With a meatloaf that size, it could take upwards of three and a half to four hours at 250 degrees. But truthfully, we don't even know yet. We're gonna monitor the temperature and we're looking to get an internal temperature of about 150, 155 degrees. So we're gonna keep an eye on it. We've got the Thermapen MK4 on standby. We'll check back in soon. All right. We've had this meatloaf in the smoker at 250 degrees for about three and a half hours now. We're registering temperatures using the Thermapen MK4 right around 160 degrees. It's time to pull it out. I want you to get the first hand look. Take, check this out. Look at that. Oh man. That thing is sweet. We had this meatloaf in the smoker for three and a half hours. This is about a six pound meatloaf if you're including the bacon. And we've got that stuffed with fresh mozzarella cheese. We reached an internal temperature of about 160 degrees. It is time to cut into this monstrosity. Come check it out. I'm gonna go ahead and cut into this. I want a little piece with the cheese and the bacon. I think I got just about everything right here. Man, I'm excited for this. Still a little hot, but man, is that good. Tastes just like an Italian meatball with a little bit extra. Get a little, uh, getting a little flavor from that bacon. Man, is that good. I'm just gonna just take this right here. Mm. Super juicy. You can see here with the bacon, we didn't get as much smoke penetration. There is a little bit of a smoke ring. I would have expected a lot more if there wasn't bacon wrapped around it, but that kind of acted like a shield. But as we all know, everything's better with bacon. Man, that's good. But until next time, stay safe, eat well. We'll see you then. Thanks again for tuning in to Anderson Smoke Show. Be sure to like the video and subscribe to my channel so that you can keep up with the latest content.